I've got unfinished business with CCC, I think. But yeah, I've just, I've taken that. <laughs> I want to be one of the best ultra runners in the world, quite simply. My goal was to be one of the best in Britain and I have achieved that now and I've got a great opportunity now in, to, to test myself and to, you know, put myself up there and, and really see how I do compete with the best in the world. There was always a bit of me that just kind of had this gut feeling that I, I had an athlete in me, a high level athlete. And um, yeah, I've, that's, it's, this whole journey is about seeing, yeah, seeing where I can go with it. I was, really inspired first of all by good friends when I was living in Dubai. Friends Heidi and Rob, they had gone out and done an ultra in Switzerland and it just looked incredible. And I don't think I actually really knew what it entailed but saw some pictures and yeah, just thought I want to do that. Whatever it is, I want to do it. It just looked amazing. That was in 2016 and I signed up to do the race in 2017. So it was about when I was turning 30 years old and I was quite motivated around that time to be like the fittest I'd ever been. And yeah, I prepared by um, running a 50 kilometer race in Oman in the UAE in the February before it. So that gave me a bit of an insight, although nowhere near as hilly as the Alps, <laughs> the Swiss Alps. And it was quite incredible. I actually ran my first marathon and my first ultra marathon on the same day. And then went out to, to Switzerland and, and did the race. And it took, it took me forever. It took like nine and a half hours for me to do the 50, 50 kilometers. And you know, I've, <laughs> this year I've ran a 50 kilometer race in four and a half hours. So I was really, you know, at the start, I was a real beginner um, with everything. And it was the, mo the biggest thing I'd ever done. I'm a PE teacher and I do that two days a week, which is great because I like to train in the mornings and in order to work really well with my, my training, I have also set up my own business. So I am a health coach and I'm also a running coach. So, it, you know, it's amazing. I'm getting to work with people that want to improve their, their health and their lifestyle. So now I'm back in Scotland and I have been for just about a year, to be honest. The training here, obviously a lot cooler, <laughs> but the hills are great, you know? There's hills, there's so much variety, so I'm just, I'm loving it. I think it's, it's really helping me to get a lot stronger and um, I'm able to train on trails every day, which is what I love. There was definitely a big turning point for me in my life um, where I really felt I needed to, to change my lifestyle. And it was when my friend Sarah, an amazing friend of mine, 
um, who I met at university probably when I was about 17 years old. And um, Sarah took her, took her life a few years ago. And just from, from then, I really was like, okay, like life's short and you need to go and make the most of it. I did CCC in 2019 and uh, it was my first time running 100k. I finished 13th, um, obviously in 2019, that was just a year after my first race. So I was really, really pleased with that result, but I finished, I finished feeling fresh-ish. <laughs> obviously as fresh as you can after 100k, but I really had more, I had much more in the tank. Then Covid hits in, <laughs> obviously in 2020, didn't get the chance to race anything long then. So I've got unfinished business with CCC, I think. So for this race and all of my ultras, my strategy is always to like really make sure I run my own race. Before I came out here at the beginning of August, I had a bit of a problem with my foot. because so it wasn't that long ago that I did the Lakeland Trails 100K. And it's kind of been giving me a bit of problems with my knee as well. So I'm gonna be definitely in this race, there's gonna be a lot of management that I'm gonna to have to do to make sure I can you know, keep on top of it. And if it is causing any problems, I know what I can do and to stretch it and to help keep the movement in it so I can run at my best. So packing my kit is pretty important. You, you know, you can't even get to race these races if you haven't got a lot of mandatory kit. Obviously shoes, want to be wearing shoes that I've you know, trained in a lot and find to be really comfortable and have a really good grip on the terrain here, the rocky terrain. It's also going to possibly be a bit wet in points. Race nutrition, as I said, like is so important and I've got, so this is all the stuff that I'm going to have in from the beginning. So definitely quite a few kilos in there that I'll be carrying myself from the start because we can't have any assistance until about 55 kilometers in. So in here I've got gels and for the early part of the course I've got quite a lot of solid food as well. So I've got some bars, um, some like fruits bars, some almond bars, that's like kind of oat bars, um, an energy drink as well. So on the start line, a race like this, I think I just, it's so exciting. Like it's, I tend to just make sure I'm feeling just happy, which is normally very easy because, you know, especially this race, I'll be standing in the pen with the, with other elite, elite runners, a lot of who are friends who I really get on well with and I'll make sure my watch is ready to go. I've got the course <laughs> on the watch just in case there's any bits where their marking's not great or so I'll make sh I'll be making sure I've got that. Just trying to really enjoy the moment because it's quite an incredible start with the music and the crowd. I'm pretty familiar with the course because I've raced it once before and I also did a full recce of it 
before I raced it two years ago. And then this year I've been out on some of it. I've, I've seen the end of the course again, kind of the last 30 kilometers. And because I wasn't able to go do the whole thing, I've instead done a lot of like looking at maps again and videos online and been able to re-familiarize myself with it. Being up against the world's best, my strategy maybe is a little bit more uh, on the side of risk. I want to put myself up there from the start and be in the race, which is maybe a little bit different to how I would would normally race. But it still is still going to be checking in really regularly. Like, is this sustainable for me? Am I running my own race still within that small element of risk of putting myself up there with the with the world's best. Um, but I think also like when you are racing the world's best, this is why it's, you know, I don't want to come here and just hobble around the course with an injury. I want to come here and compete with the best. So if I'm not able to compete um, because I get it with too much pain or my leg is particularly causing me, gonna cause long-term injury, then I need to consider that in my strategy too. It is important to get a good start, but I think it's also really important not to go too hard. I think I am quite good at keeping my emotions in check. I wouldn't say I was two years ago. I had definitely had a really tough race, but now I feel I'm, I'm a lot better at it and actually, yeah, probably one of my strengths. The, the way that we've worked the aid stations and and no emotion being involved has, has been really, really good in my last three races. So just gonna, gonna keep doing what's working. So in aid stations, I like to not waste any time. <laughs> I'll be carrying all my own food and gels for the first half until we get to Switzerland and to Champilac where I'll then have my crew, but again, at the aid stations, there's no talk, it's just like, just business. <laughs> you're doing well, you're doing awesome, so you're holding your own, okay, back out that way. Okay, see you next checkpoint. I just, uh, get everything I need and I'm out as quick as I can and I don't like to even let them know really how I'm feeling and I don't I don't really want them to ask me that so I just kind of I don't like the emotion and any talk about pain or anything it's just about give me my food and my drinks see you later <laughs> get lonely I quite I quite like the the moments when you're just completely on your on your own out there and there's no one around because then again you it's a bit easier to then run your own race sometimes probably would say in that middle part it's nice to have some people to occasionally talk to I used to talk a lot during races I used to um, probably talk too much that I like tired myself out so I've kind of brought that back reined that in and I don't talk so much in races now but I quite like it, I quite like the, you're quite often in a bit of a battle with your mind and about seeing kind of what you can push through. I 
think if I had easier distractions, it maybe wouldn't be so rewarding at the end when you push through it and come out the other side. Final. Really, really good. So strong. Can you put that somewhere in the back? What? And head turned out. To keep motivation going at the in the in the later stages of the race, definitely yeah, kind of break it down into smaller milestones and that really helps. Right, you've got nine gels. Okay. Coke. Okay, you're doing an amazing medal. Back out that way, keep the body on your right. I kind of have almost memorised how long I think it might take to get to the next point and or I carry a little card that's got all that information as well with the elevation profile so I'll know, okay, it's 6K and it's this amount of elevation gain and loss. I'm thinking it's going to take this time. Um, just kind of keep focused on in the moment really because as well I'm constantly like fueling. I've got to just keep an eye on the time and, and making sure I'm eating when I should be eating and certainly plenty to do to keep me, keep me busy. <laughs> I, in my last race, I really, I was quite sore in the last 30k and I just really thought about like just one foot in front of the other, one foot in front of the other, um, keeping a kind of consistent effort rather than having bursts of like, okay, I feel good, I'm going to go hard and then having to walk, I kind of like try and keep it quite consistent. You can always do so much more than you think, especially in that last kind of 10, 15 K or so of a race. I've really learned that in the last couple of races that I've done, especially the last 100 Ks. It's amazing, you think you've got nothing left, but you really do have more. So I almost try and remind myself of that as well, so that I, the mind doesn't win in terms of thinking that your, your run is over and you've not got anything left, so trying to remember that. I had that kick at Ultra Trail Cape Town or I had that kick at still at Lakeland Trails even though I thought I was done. So yeah, I just remind myself of that. <laughs> You know, to do really well at this race, it would absolutely, it would, you know, it would be performing with the best in the world and being up there in the top, you know, if you finish in the top 10 here, you're, you're in the top 10 of, in the world really over this kind of distance and yeah, that would be amazing because again, I, when I was at the World Champs two years ago and I had a really tough race, I was, I was really disappointed and didn't think I got to kind of show that, um, so I would love to do it here. This is amazing, beautiful picture of Sarah, which says, she's standing next to this big chalkboard and it says, um, do more than just exist. And I've 
I've just taken that. <laughs> Sorry. But yeah, I've just, I've taken that. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I've just taken that forward in this in this whole journey. I think um yeah, I, I will I just keep I keep remembering Sarah.